A decent mount for a telescope can have a big impact on the observing experience. Not only that it needs to be sturdy enough to hold the telescope in check, but it also needs to be lightweight enough so that it can be easily transported outside or to the observing location. It should also allow for very fine adjustments without translating every movement into unnecessary vibrations that then get passed on to the telescope, ruining your view. This is especially important for high power observations. So the mount of a telescope has a very important role to play. That's why in today's video, we are going to take a deeper look at the AZ Pronto mount from Skywatcher and see how it performs in all the important categories. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's get this review on the way. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to VD Observatory. A few months ago, I purchased the 4-inch SkyMax Maxutov Cassegrain telescope from Skywatcher. And for the mount, I decided to get the AZ Pronto model, also from Skywatcher. The company offers a variety of telescopes and mounts, and sometimes I find that it can be a bit difficult to make sense of all the different lineups. That is why I thought that it might be a good idea to make a couple of charts showing you guys where the differences are. First, let's take a look at the telescope lineups from Skywatcher and the corresponding mounts if included with a specific telescope. Here you can see that there are quite a few product lineups, including refractors, reflectors and Maxutov telescopes designed for different applications and targeted at astronomers with all kinds of experience levels. Some of these telescopes come with mounts included in the box and some don't, in which case you would need to purchase a mount separately. There are basically two types of mount designs, alt azimuth and equatorial. In the case of the alt azimuth version, the movement on the x-axis is parallel to the ground. If you want to follow a star, for example, across the night sky, looking through a telescope with an alt azimuth mount, then you need to move the telescope on both the X and Y axis to keep the object centered in the field of view. By contrast, a mount with an equatorial design has its X axis parallel to Earth's axis of rotation. This allows an observer to follow an object in the sky only by simply moving the telescope along this axis. Vertical adjustments aren't necessary here. This is why telescopes on equatorial mounts are, for example, perfect for astrophotography. Now that we have looked at how these two types of mounts work, let's see which are the more popular mounts Skywatcher offers and what are their main features. The AZ-1, 2 and 3, including the Pronto version, offer the same basic design with only differences to the mount's rotating head. The AZ-5 and AZ-GT also share the same design between them. The only difference is that the 5 is controlled manually and the GT is a Wi-Fi enabled go-to mount. The AZ-S is the sturdiest of all these alt azimuth mounts featuring a go-to navigation as well. Then there are the equatorial mount designs that, much like the AZ variants, offer multiple options, starting with the lightweight manual controlled EQ1 and ending with the heavy duty go to enabled EQM35. Today I want to talk about the AZ Pronto mount. When I ordered the 4 inch Mac, I was aiming to build a dedicated travel setup that I can take with me whenever I'm going on holiday. So one of the main characteristics was that the telescope and the mount both would have to be light and compact enough to fit into a normal sized luggage case. The AZ Pronto mount fitted this description rather well, whilst offering some other nice features as well. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's first start with the dimensions. The mount 
has a minimum total height of 81.5 centimeters, the maximum value being 137.5 centimeters. Both values are for a legs folded out configuration. With the legs pulled together, the width is only 15 centimeters. As for the weight, the mount comes in at 3.5 kilograms and is rated for a maximum load of 3 kilograms. Responsible for the low weight is an all aluminum design with a few plastic bits as well. The mount consists of two parts. The bottom part makes out the legs and the top part represents the mobile rotating head. The legs are made out of hollow rectangular tubes in a three tube per leg configuration with the middle one being able to slide out effectively doubling the length of the leg. After the desired length is set, the legs can be tightened using a metal compression screw. Each leg has one of these. It's easily done and very secure. All three legs have long rubber tips that enable the mount to be very well anchored in place, no matter the surface it sits on. The upper part where the legs come together is made out of cast aluminum and features three solid hinges, one for each leg. Talking about hinges, I also want to mention that all hinges on this mount are based on a normal bolt and nuts design that can all be tightened or loosened should this be necessary, which is great. The rotating head mount is also made out of cast aluminum and features two independently moving platforms, one for the X and one for the Y axis. This rotating head is secured in place on top of the platform with the legs by a sturdy tightening knob. Navigation is done using two flexible slow motion rods, one for vertical and one for horizontal smooth and fine motion control. These slow motion rods can be attached on either side so that all telescope types can be accommodated. To enable fast object tracking, there are also two large tightening screws, one for horizontal and one for vertical movement that can be loosened so that the telescope can be moved freely by hand on both axes. The telescope attaches securely via a Vixen style bracket and is secured in place by a large thumb screw. Since the tip of the thumb screw offers only a small area of contact, over time the telescope bracket will suffer indentation marks from tightening this thumb screw repeatedly. Here I wish Skywatcher would have used some kind of mechanism with a small plate that pushes uniformly against the telescope's mounting bracket when the thumb screw is tightened. Also, I found it to be a bit odd that the mount doesn't have a bubble level to help with precise positioning, which is why I felt the need to add one myself. It's just a simple bubble level that I ordered off Amazon. I can leave a link in the description below if you want to check out later. Other than these small aspects, there is little to complain about this mount. It's light, simple and compact, but also sturdy enough that it has no trouble handling my 4-inch Mac together with a heavy eyepiece. There is little to no flex under load and the vibrations induced by turning the flexible rods are minimal. Also, the movements on the X and Y axis are precise and battery smooth. Even if the maximum recommended load for this mount is 3.5 kilograms, I'm confident that it can handle 4 or 5 kilogram telescopes as well. So these are my opinions about the AZ Pronto mount from Skywatcher. And now I'm curious to see what you guys think about it. Let me know in the comments below. Alright, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have questions or feedback, then please leave a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.